Hi, my name's Leslie Gillen, and I chose Susan B. Anthony as my biography, and here's a picture of her. For many years, women did not have the same rights or privileges as men until Susan B. Anthony came along. Anthony was one of the America's most important civil rights leader who fought for women's rights. She changed the country dramatically, and because of her, women and men both have the right to vote. She was born on February 15, 1820, in Adams, Massachusetts, to Daniel and Lucy Anthony. She has eight brothers and sisters, and she was the second of the eight. She was raised in the Quaker religion. The Quaker family believed the equal treatment for everyone, regardless of gender or skin color. They had a strong tradition of abolition. Slavery was abolished in Massachusetts in 1790, but not until 1826 when New York followed suit. Adams Town, the Quakers, helped fugitive slaves from New York and some stayed in Adams. Susan B. Anthony learned to read and write at an early age. The family moved to Bentonsville, New York when she was around seven years old. Her and her brothers and sisters attended public school until a teacher refused to teach Anthony long division. It was then when her father started his own home school where her family and friends from the Quaker family attended. In 1837, Anthony decided to advance her schooling, so she went to a female seminary school in Philadelphia. But not long, she went back to teaching to help her father overcome his debts due to the panic of 1837, and he declared bankruptcy because of this. 1838, she joined the Daughters of Temperance, which is an organization that teaches families about the effects of alcohol. And she also campaigned, com campaigned for stronger liquor laws. She moved away shortly after that from the Quaker's family because she witnessed uh, preachers and family members and friends drinking alcohol. She was a teacher in the early 1940s until she discovered the salary difference between men and women. $10 for men a month and $2.50 for women a month. So then she decided to join the teachers' union. She stopped teaching in 1853. And in 1845, her family moved to a farm in Rochester, New York. She joined them in 1848 to work on the farm. She can also continued her work with the temperance movement. And in 1851, she met her lifelong friend Elizabeth Cady Stanton at an anti-slavery meeting. 1852, she gave her first speech at a National Women's Rights Convention. And then in 1853, when she went to give another uh, speech, she was not allowed to speak because of her gender. So she left that speech to call her own. Anthony and her friend Stanton founded the Women's State Temperance Society. They penetitioned the New York State legis Legislature to pass a law limiting sales of liquor. It was then rejected because most of the signatures were from women and children. She, they both resigned from the society because of their gender and they got too much problems from people bashing them. In, in 1850 through the 1860s, her and Stanton continued her, her speeches and speakings for fighting for equal rights. And in 1856, she became an agent for the American Anti-Slavery Society. But when she was... When she was uh, an agent, she dealt with many angry mobs and people. Her image was dragged through the streets really bad. In 1863, she formed the Women's National Loyal League to support the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery and com campaigning for a full citizenship for blacks and women. She then started to write her own weekly paper called The Revolution. The mass heading was The True Republic, Men Their Rights, and Nothing More, Woman, their rights, and nothing less. This paper argued for equal rights, suffrage, and pay. In 1869, Anthony and Stanton founded the National Women's Suffrage Association. It was then and when the 14th Amendment was adopted in 1868 that Anthony argued that it gave women the right to vote in the federal election. So her and 14 other women were arrested for violating the election laws in Rochester, New York, in the next major election but only Anthony was indicted in 1873. For four months, while she was waiting for her trial, she traveled and gave speeches titled, is it, a, is it a Crime for a Citizen of the U.S. to Vote? The trial began 
in June 1873. The judge told the jury they should be directed to find her guilty. The judge allowed her to speak and argue her side. She stated that her rights as a citizen had been violated and she was fined $100 in cost of the prosecution she refused to pay. In 1887, the two suffrage organizations came back together called National American Woman Suffrage Association, Anthony and Stanton serving as presidents. She fought for suffrage at both state and federal laws. In 1920, it was, it was successful with the passage of the 19th Amendment, 14 years after Anthony had died. 1900, at age 80, Anthony retired as president of her organization. On March 13, 1906, she died at her home in Rochester, New York, and she never married nor had children. But at her last public address, she spoke the now famous word, failure is impossible. I chose her because I'm a strong believer that men and women both should have equal rights through everything. And I really appreciate everything that she did during the civil rights to make it possible for men and women both to have the right to vote and have equal rights. Thank you.